All right, curve fitting with linear models, section 2.7. Uh, today, this can be really, really advanced math. Uh, we're just kind of kind of look at it and use the kind of just the understanding of the basic parts of it. Um, we will not be using the calculator today. You can do really, really advanced stuff with calculators. We're not going to look at that part of it today. We're just going to kind of look at the very bare basics, bare minimums of it, and just kind of have an understanding understanding of how you can make lines and graphs um, based off scatter plots, really. Okay, so kind of unique, kind of cool. But curve fitting with linear models, section 2.7. Uh, vocabulary here. Regression. Regression is the statistical study of the relationship between variables. Okay, so regression is technically like what happens in lines using statistics to compare lines and a bunch of data. Because, you know, the lines we've been doing the last couple days, they're nice, neat, they come out straight, they're really cool. Well, when we start to compile data and try and find trends of what's really consistent and what's going on, we use regression to kind of say, hey, here's how accurate this is. Okay, now that's one of those things that you can do with calculators. And if we get a day, we'll maybe try and do a lab with it because it is kind of unique and it is kind of cool. Um, so I would like to take a day someday here in the near future and we'll do a lab with all these calculator stuff. Uh, we will talk about correlation. Again, some of you taking the map test today might have saw a correlation question. I know some earlier today said they did. But correlation is the measure of the strength and direction of the relationship between two variables or data sets. Essentially, you can have three different types of correlation. You can have what is called a positive correlation. Positive correlation means it's going up, just like a positive slope. Positive slope is going up. You can have a negative correlation. Negative slope is in negative meaning going down. And then you can have a, neg or a no correlation. And no correlation is kind of like a hodgepodge there. The points are all over. There's really no coincidence between anything there. Okay? Um, there's no type of correlation. They're just kind of throwing stuff together. That's no correlation. Now, students, whenever we get to this, it seems like they always want to get confused on the negative correlation. And it's because of the term negative. They see the term negative and they think bad, and they say anything that happens bad is negative correlation. That's not true. Negative correlation just means as data increases, the other data decreases. Okay, so something is going up and the other thing is going down. Um, a lot of times I like to use the example of uh, the temperature outside and the sale of winter coats. So as the temperature outside gets colder, so it's going down, the sales of winter coats typically goes up. That would be a negative correlation because one's going down as the other one's going up. And you can think about it in reverse. As the temperature gets hotter outside, nobody goes out and buys their winter coats at that time usually. So again, that's a negative correlation. It does not mean a negative or bad thing. It just means as one goes up, the other one goes down. What? Well, you know, if you want to get the sale prices, you always could too. Um, positive correlation. Uh, positive correlation, a lot of one, lot, the one I like to use the most is like the amount of time you study and the grade you get on the test. The more you study, the better you do on a test. That's a positive correlation, which is true. And then no correlation. Uh, a typical no correlation would be like the color of your eyes and how tall you are. Mm, the color of your eyes and how your height has nothing to do with each other. Okay, you can have blue eyes and be tall, and you can have blue eyes and be short. It doesn't matter. Okay, so that's a no correlation. And what I drew on here was the correlation lines. Those were the line of best fits. Essentially, kind of how your lines are correlated. Okay, kind of shows the trend there. Uh, correlation coefficient, that's one of those things that you can use with calculators to get kind of a precise data. Um, a one is a strong positive line, as in it's very, very close, tight together. It's a very, very... Um, approximate line. A uh, negative one would be a strong negative. Um, and then zero, anything close to zero, it's like weak. It can be a weak positive or a weak negative. Okay? But you can't have one bigger than one or less than one. I think somebody today on their map test said they have like 0.8. I was like, well, that's not, you know, that's closer to that strong positive correlation there. Though. Okay? All right. So what we're doing today here is we're going to take data. Okay? We're taking data here. It's going to give us a lot of data, and we're going to have to make a scatter plot with it. Now, that's probably really going to be the toughest part of what you're doing all day, is, you know, making all those little dots on your scatter plot, okay? We're going to make the scatter plot dots, all right? That's going to be the first step, make scatter plots. Second step is we're going to draw a straight edge. Um, the key to drawing a line through there 
is we want some points above and below the line. Typically, we always want at least two points on that line, okay? When I draw my line, I always typically want two points on the line. Now, if I can get three points on the line, that's even better. But I want at least two points on the line because I will then use those two points on the line. Now, this is something that all of us could technically in here get a different answer when how we do this today, and all of us could still be technically right because it just depends on what type of points you pick. You know, somebody might see that's the best line. Somebody else might say, well, you know, I think that's a better line maybe as it comes up on the screen. There it is. You know, you might all kind of differ on what type of line is best for you. That's okay. Your slope should still be about the same and your equations should still all be without the same range. Okay, so don't feel bad if your answers are a little different than your neighbors. Um, just kind of depends on the line. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to use the points to find the slope. So we're going to find the slope. And then using that slope in one of the points, we're going to take that information and plug it into point slope form. And then we're going to stop right there at point slope form. We're not going to change into slope intercept today because we're going to get some really weird slopes. Like the one today I think we had was like 25 over 8. We had one that was 117 over 12 or something like that. Like you get some weird slopes just because you're dealing with data. Now, if we're dealing with calculators, I'll let you, you know, type it out on a decimal and that's fine. But because we're not, we're just going to leave it just as point slope form and you're done. So it's not as bad today. All right. So let's look at the first one and kind of see how this works. All right. So we want to make a scatter plot of the data below. Now, my squiggles aren't the best here, but if I do something like this at the bottom corner, does anybody know what that means? Yeah, it's like a paper break. So what's that called? Now, earlier today, they were giving me grief because they were like, oh, that looks like 535, like the numbers or whatever. But that's a paper break. Okay, you kind of put squiggles on the corner. That means you're not starting at zero, zero. Okay, so I have my X and I have my Y coordinates here. Now, I need to make a solid, consistent range on the X values. So I'm going to start at, what did I start at today? I think I started at 16 and went by twos. So 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28. That work, yep. Okay, so I make my data down there at the bottom. I'm going to do the same on my Y axes now. Now on the Y, what did I start at? I think I started at 30 went by fives. So 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, something like that. Okay, so I make my data values. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to plot my points. So 21, 36. I'm going to plot 21, 36. Oh, it's about right there. 21, 41. Okay, 21, 41. It's about there. Uh, 1838. Find 1838. It's about there. Uh, 24, 46. Again, I'm going to go through, I'm going to plot every coordinate, 1631, uh, 1939, 1735, and 1946. All right, perfect. So I get my scatter plot here. Now, just based on this information alone, what type of correlation do I have here, Garrett? That would be a positive correlation. It's going up. Okay, so that's a positive correlation there because we're going up. Good. Now, I need to make a trend line. How many points do I want my trend line to go through at least? I always want at least two. Now, here earlier, I can find, kind of found three here. You know, something like that would be a good one, something like that. Um, that one right there, is that a good one for you? I mean, I almost get about four points there, don't I? That's a pretty good trend line right there. Really, I'm trying to go through this point, and I'm trying to go through about that point. But I get those other two points right, right about there, right? Maybe if I you know, had a bigger graph, I could be a little more precise. Okay? So what are those coordinates? Well, that coordinate right there is 2446. And this coordinate right here, what was that one? That was 1838. No, was that 1838? No, that was 1735. 
Okay? So I have my two coordinates, right? Here comes the next step. I need to find my slope. No matter what, anytime I'm doing an equation of lines, I need to find the slope. That's why I want to go through two points. Because I'm going to use those two points, and I'm going to find the slope. So m equals 46 minus 35 over 24 minus 17. I use those points that my line goes through to find the slope. So 46 minus 35 is 11. 24 minus 17 is 7. My slope is 11 over 7. Now again, depending on what points you pick, you could be off a little bit. But really my slope there is about what? One and a half? Would you all agree with that? Slope is about one and a half. So all of your slopes should be somewhere within that range. Now I'm going to take that and I'm going to pick one of my points. It doesn't matter which point I pick. What point would you like to pick, Colin? 18. No. One of the ones I used right there. Oh, 20. I'm going to use that point, and I'm going to use that slope, and I'm going to plug it into what form? Point slope form. So I'm going to get y minus 46 equals 11 over 7, parentheses, x minus 24. And I'm going to stop right there. Okay, we could get more precise, and we could change it to slope intercept form if we wanted to, but... That's the same, you know, it's the same equation. We're just going to stop there just because we're not going to use calculators and I want you to get used to just that part of it right there. Okay? Is that really that bad? What's the hardest part of all that probably? Making those dang dots, really. I mean, the math part of it, psh, we've been doing that already. It's just making those dots on the scatter plot is kind of the toughest part. Okay? Um, I'm going to skip this one just because it's high numbers. I'm going to do the next one. How about this? Let's do the next one here. Okay, it's got some smaller numbers, some easier numbers to do. I want to make a scatter plot of the data below, draw a trend line, write its equation. Same thing here. I'm going to do the same exact thing. I have my x values and I have my y values. Okay, so x values, I started at like 14. I'm going to go by 10s or yeah, 5. Yeah, I'm going to go by 5 starting at 15 here. So 15, 25, 35. 45. Okay. Oh, grab my paper break. Okay. And then on the upside, I'm going to start at what? I'm going to start at 100 and go by tens maybe if I can. 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160. Oh, I'm going to have to add some lines. 170, 180, and 200 is going to have to be up there, I guess. You can maybe go by 20s if you needed to. Okay. So I'm going to go and I'm going to plot my points now. 50 and tw 200. It's about right there. 50 and 200. 30 and 150. 30, 150. What we get right there? Uh, 25 and 140. Right there. 20 and 130. Right there. Uh, 18 and 120. About right there. 16 and 110, and then 14 and 100. So if I look, what type of correlation would that one be? What do you say, Sage? That's positive. Okay, so now I'm going to come, I'm going to draw my trend line. Now if I look at it here, uh, something like that's a pretty good trend line. Would you all agree? I actually hit about three points right there. Okay, so now I'm going to find... Two of those coordinates, I'm going to pick this coordinate and this coordinate, just because I'm going to pick something different. Okay, could I pick this coordinate up here? You bet. I could pick any coordinate. I'm going to pick two. The coordinates there are 25, 140, and 20, and 130. Okay, so using those coordinates, what do I need to find now? Andy, I need to find the slope. So M equals... 140 minus 130 over 25 minus 20. 140 minus 30 is 10. 25 over 20 is 5. My slope comes out to be actually 2. Slope comes out to be 2. Awesome. Even better. I'm going to take this slope. What else do I need along with that slope? I need a point. Which point do you want, Colin? 
130 and 20, awesome. I'm gonna use that point, that slope, and I'm gonna plug it into what form, Jack? Uh, point, slope form. point slope form. Y minus 130 equals two, parentheses, X minus 20, and I'm done, right there. Okay, and again, this is how you can use data um, to find trend lines and kind of estimate correlations. Okay. Try the next one here on your own. Take a couple seconds. There's only six to plot. Kind of a big range on the y-axis there. Make this your x and this your y. Take a couple seconds here. Plot this out and then try and find the line. All right, if you check yourself here, um, this is the equation that I came up with. Y minus 17 equals 9 over 2, parentheses, X minus 14. Now, if you think about that, my slope here is about 4.5. 9 over 2 comes out to be 4.5. If you look at your slope, hopefully your slope somewhere around 4. 4, 5, you know, th larger side of 3. Anything within there of a slope is pretty good. The only time you can really go wrong today is if, well, if you get a negative slope, or let's say you get a slope of like 30 or something 40, like really, really abnormally large or small. Well, then it's going to be off a little bit. But as long as you're within a range of that slope and you kind of use that point that we're given, you're pretty good. Okay. Um, now I just want to stop and think about these here. Okay, because these are kind of fun just to think about correlations. Now, number five here. I'm asking, would you expect a positive, negative, or no correlation between the two data sets? So number five says a person's age and the number of pets he or she has. So as you think about it, as a person gets older, do they get more pets? As a person gets older, do they get less pets? Or as a person gets older, does that have no inclination at all on the number of pets they have? What type of correlation would you say there, Andy? Yeah, that's a no correlation, okay? So a person's age does not really mean, you can be 30 and have, you know, three cats, or you can be 30 and be the crazy cat lady in the neighborhood and have, you know, a house full of cats, 60, 70 cats. You've seen one of those houses? They're kind of crazy. Okay. Uh, number six, the number of times you brush your teeth and the number of cavities you have. The more you brush your teeth, what happens to your cavities usually? The more we brush our teeth, we get... So that's going to be a negative correlation. Number six would be a negative correlation. Just give me one sec. One second. Thank you. Just wait. Here's your assignment. I wanted to give this to you. Sorry. I'll give you the three-point assignment because I want to be nice for you here today. I want to give you a three-point assignment. I want you to submit this on Shobi, please, just so I can see your graphs and everything. Submit this on Shobi. So make sure you have that downloaded. If you need the code again, let me know. What? Yep, just take a picture and submit it through Shobi. It will be up there. Do the last assignment there. You only really have to graph three of them, so it's really not that bad. Okay.